you know, not eating meat is a choice. And I didn't <laughs> consent to it. So anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> Welcome to Liturgical Shenanigans, a Wayfolk Arts podcast with your hosts, Hannah, Phil, Jackson, and Maddie. Happy turkey time, everybody. Wow. We're all looking forward to meat. You know how everybody <laughs> says, the says the vegetarian. Oh, goodness. Well, well, that means the turkey that may have been at Phil's house is definitely looking for... You know what? I gotta stop this while it ends. You know how there's that one family member at every holiday that you have know, every you have to warn the kids about? Mm-hmm. Aunt Maddie's here. So I'm concerned it's me! <laughs> so friends, in case you haven't guessed, we're gonna be talking a little bit about Thanksgiving today because Thanksgiving is a sort of unofficially ritualized holiday in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Thanksgiving rituals and uh, our like Thanksgiving ritual in general, our own personal experience with Thanksgiving ritual, and then hopefully touch on uh, some ways that you might thoughtfully uh, ritualize Thanksgiving in your own home. That's awesome. And we want to have a little bit of a brief... um, forward about that because uh, for some of you uh, we're pretty certain that thanksgiving isn't necessarily a time that uh, is celebrated or is looked forward to there's folks that thanksgiving means going home uh, and experiencing painful conversations uh, being put in uncomfortable situations um, perhaps being not seen in ways you'd like to be seen Um, it's a tough time to be a person who's deconstructing faith Uh, It can be a time of conflict. And there's also all of the kind of colonialism that is built into the way that we do Thanksgiving and the stories that we tell. And uh, so we want to acknowledge that and also name that uh, this might be a month that you want to jump on to the after show and join us on Patreon for that, because we're going to be talking about um, deconstructing during Thanksgiving time and that sort of thing on the after show. But for this time, we're going to lean into the... uh, the spirit of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I have, I, d- I just want to name a couple cool things that I have learned about Thanksgiving rituals in, yes, indeed, the class that I am taking about rituals. Um, so, what I said earlier about Thanksgiving being sort of this like unofficial. Unofficial? Un- what? That's what you said last time too, and <laughs> oh, I liked it. No. <laughs> oh no. Unofficial. Unofficial. Oh no. <laughs> Unofficial. Um ritual. It's obviously not a liturgical uh holiday in the church. Um, but it is often now a thing that churches celebrate because it has become so ritualized in our family settings. And um, one of the things that is always true about Thanksgiving is it's this celebration of abundance. You always eat too much and make too much food on Thanksgiving um, because it's sort of a harvest and abundance celebration. Celebration of nature's fecundity. Yes. To uh, before, back to yes. a couple episodes ago. Exactly. It's another um, hashtag I get to use on the Patreon. <laughs> Amazing. Um, but it happens before we head into this darker winter time where we kind of have to hunker down and um, make sure that that abundance lasts through the times of scarcity. Um, but before we do that, we kind of go all out and go, hey, look at all of this abundance that we have. Um, and uh, so often there are particular foods that always have to be made, um, particular uh, brands of food that have to be used. Oh, like, I'm curious. Uh, like for, I'll get into that later. Um, cause I, I, cause because I felt called out when that was named in class and I was like, oh no, it's true about my favorite Thanksgiving dish. Um, 
there's also like who are the people that you invite to your home um there's so many things that like across so many different families there there are these um sort of standards for the Thanksgiving ritual that have been consistent across so many different families. So I'm excited to get to talk about uh, or just hear from the four of us what our Thanksgiving rituals have been for ourselves um, and see where the touch points are between mm -hmm. all of them. Yes, I'll take a break. Okay. <laughs> 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 I just want to know, like, I guess uh, you, you said you're taking a break, but I want to hear this name brand situation. Okay. And okay. Maybe we can get a sponsor oh. for the episode. We can look into it. Sure. Yeah. Ocean right. Spray Cranberries, if you're out there. Oh, yeah. Ocean okay. Spray? Yeah. I Cran cranberry jelly. Weirdly, Isn't I that assumed. A what is that juice? So what you were going to say? Yeah. You don't know what Ocean Spray Cranberries it's are? It's a juice. No. I mean, sure. Yes. It's also a brand. Yeah. Well, Why would you spray I mean, gelled cranberries? No, 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 no. It's Listen to Hannah, what she's going to say. <laughs> okay, so there's like, there, there's a cranberry I mean, sauce. So, so for thanks, the Thanksgiving the meal, yeah. um, at least the ones that I am familiar with, you've got uh, turkey, you've got potatoes, you've got sweet potatoes, you've got uh, green bean casserole, you've got lots of pies, um, and you've got this cranberry sauce. I'm forgetting lots of things, but there's a small array of the things that we eat at Thanksgiving. Stuffing, I forgot stuffing, one of my favorites. Um, but anyway, this cranberry sauce, um, some people make their own. I have uh, aunts and uncles who make their own that are like, that's that's what they need. But like, if you go to a variety of different families, they will say that this ocean spray very gelatin -ish. It. It's from a can. It's from a can. Yeah, and you just like plop in. it on the plate because there's you ridges. Slice it according to the ridges. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um like that's one of the brands. Yes. Like you it's kind of we're branching out now because of foodie culture. Um people are making their own things from scratch now, but like Ocean Spray Cranberry Sauce was like the cranberry sauce that you had to have. So like if you have gelled cranberries, would, would you like... I like would the, not like, eat that. It's the same thing. No. It looks just no. like that with no. the ridges and the can and everything. <laughs> I will eat You didn't see can. the can. You get, you sit down on the table. Stay I with me. Know. Stay with me. You sit down on the table. <laughs> I will know. It's like the Coke and Pepsi challenge. You though. are like, wrong. I will know I, about Coke and Pepsi It's a question. I can't well. be wrong. <laughs> of course you would. But what I'm saying is, is it like a Coke and Pepsi challenge situation? Do you, do you feel confident that if I put yes. out four gelled cranberries, I feel extremely you confident. could pick the ocean spray yes. out of the bunch? Yes. I don't know that I could because I, will know I didn't have like a shot. cranberry. Yeah. Jack Jackson probably could. I don't know that I could because cranberry sauce wasn't one of like my fixation foods. Hang on, at You just said it was like the thing. No. I said it was one of there the things. One of the other things <laughs> is Stove top stuffing. Um, I'm trying to think of what the other things are. Green um, bean oh, oh, green bean casserole <laughs> is my your thing. Actual Thank thing. you. <laughs> my actual thing, because you have to use Campbell's uh, mushroom, yes. cream of mushroom soup, and you have to use wow. French's. Yeah, uh, whole thing. The Christmas Colonialism and capitalism like we're talking I know, about in the episode. It's terrible, show. Right. but yeah. it is what uh, it needs to be. I know, I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is. Or this the turkey won't come our down the chimney. Rituals, and, <laughs> which is nuts. The and I'm also the grateful <laughs> that we are branching out from that and making our own things now. Not like, this Thanksgiving, though, right? Well, no. It depends. No, no, hold on. <laughs> not, not for the green bean casserole. Green bean casserole is sacred to me, and I can't mess with it. You have to do it with those brand things. But for some of the other things, I have started. We have started branching out. Jackson makes our stuffing now and it's awesome because also he bakes the bread and it's really good um but oh no, i wish i could show you all maddie's face it's very <laughs> concerning <laughs> can, can we do the ingredients for the green bean casserole one more time yes um okay what kind of campbell soup was it what do you mean cream, cream of mushroom, mushroom. okay <laughs> what do you mean soup? what kind of campbell soup um, see the thing is some brands of cream of mushroom have <laughs> chicken stock <laughs> I see what you're saying. But anyways, Campbell Cream and Mushroom. Yeah. We will think about it. All right. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps there will be two options. Okay, okay. There has been two options before. That's true. Yeah. You know, not eating meat is a choice. And I <laughs> didn't consent to it. So anyways. <laughs> so <laughs> Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving meal is so awful for people who 
Um, yes, are, have dietary restrictions. Or, have dietary restrictions. Or have choices that they've made for themselves. Are vegans, are vegetarians, yeah. are gluten-free. Like, it's... Uh, yeah. We well, have not crafted this meal for those people. I mean, right. I would argue that it's not for them. No, I'm just well, kidding. Well, <laughs> wow. To be clear, I'm specifically attacking Phil and his choice to not eat meat. <laughs> Anyone else who makes this choice, I commend you for your efforts. <laughs> But not. <laughs> not, <laughs> not. Let's real quick. <laughs> let's real quick zoom in on some of what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I think what because, we're talking about is the ethics of the turkey industry. Stop. Right? We're no? done. Oh. That we could go there in a minute, <laughs> which is a very unethical industry. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but um, let's zoom into like what the specifics of why all these like really specific things are. A matter within the ritual mm. um because at least for me i'll give you my little hypothesis about it and then we can ping pong off of there but i think uh a reason for that is the the comfort um the familiarity the um uh preparatory comfort i'll just repeat comfort again um of about to go into winter or about to go into not planting harvest season um and so the the, the uh kind of moving into the space of we're about to enter a really hard season. We're about to enter a season where food is scarce and things like that. Uh, in, in terms of like what this uh, kind of a harvest ritual does is it brings people together with all their harvests. You all trade and you all have a bunch of food right away at the start of the season that you're not going to have food. So you have this feast. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, all these foods and all this repetition, um, uh, I, I think, I, or I wonder if the kind of philosophical, psychological underpinnings of I need Campbell's cream of mushroom soup <laughs> in my green beans is it's not just about this. It's not just about the taste, but it's also about I'm preparing to embark on a really hard thing. And I need this piece <laughs> to remind me that it's going to be OK. OK. Ooh, I have. Wait, I want, I want to counter it, but okay. OK. I want you to counter it. I did just laugh. And I want to be clear that I'm not laughing at you, Jackson. It's sure. Just that Jackson <laughs> is saying this beautiful thing. And when I heard him say we're entering this really hard season. My brain immediately went, yeah, the demon Santa Claus is coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that's actually where I'm... We must prepare our souls no, that's, for that's, the chimney invasion. That's where I'm going, actually, <laughs> Truly, though. Yes. Is I, I think traditionally, perhaps, right? Like, especially because Thanksgiving is tied to harvest and these sorts of things. But in our culture, in American current, I don't know, whatever culture, it's 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 not like <laughs> because we're so disconnected from that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, I wonder about Thanksgiving and, and in the church even right as as like the gateway to Advent. You know, like Thanksgiving mm -hmm. happens and, and then it's is. Advent. And also, Advent doesn't exist in culture anymore. So it's just like December is Christmas, mm -hmm. and so Thanksgiving is kind of like the first day of Christmas. Like we right, we go. It is that's so when many you're people. You go get your tree allowed. the next day. Yeah. You you blah 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 blah. You, the music, Christmas music starts playing, and like so, Christmas goes from Thanksgiving till Christmas, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it feels like Thanksgiving is the inaugural feast. Oh, of Christmas of tide. the feasting season. Interesting, yeah. Which which is not church accurate. Blah blah blah. But I'm saying culturally, like for me, those scents and like whatever it is, your stuffings, your turkeys, your your pies, those things that you associate sense memory with the coming of the magic time. Uh, I, I wonder about that. Yeah, it's well, like an invoking agent. Yeah. yeah. It is. And often, at least in the churches that I've been part of, the Sunday of Thanksgiving break is the hanging of the green Sunday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, which is often very lowly attended uh, because everybody's out of town for yeah. Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. which can kind of be kind of nice because the people that are hanging back are chill and they got nothing to do. And, oh, we're going to hang out with our church family. But, yeah. Can all of you that don't have friends come well, and hang stuff up at the church for us? <laughs> that's not what I said. Oh, okay. Got nothing to do out of town. <laughs> come hang some lights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do like that as kind of the like, yeah, the entryway into Advent, um, into into the into feast season. Interesting again that feast season. Uh, it's it's an it's an odd thing for the church calendar to have feast season during the season where it's Advent. There's well, it's Advent first of all, but also where you know like fresh food is scarce. 
um, in terms of like harvest rhythms. Um, Sounds you're, exactly you're... like the audacity that we have as church people. Well, yeah, currently, but like these all started way back in agrarian, like when agrarian society really mattered. Well, and there are some <laughs> so, foods that don't keep. That's true. So some of it is mm-hmm. eat it before it goes bad. Eat up, mm-hmm. you know, and then we'll get back to our gruel in February. Yeah. It'll be great. I can tell you those oat and spray cranberries in a can keep pretty long. That's true. Yep. <laughs> Fascinating modern age we live in. Yes. Um, one, one of the other pieces of the Thanksgiving ritual that is really interesting to me is the way that Thanksgiving in particular is a way that we pass on recipes, which oh. like half of the recipes, yes, have been crafted by the brands that we are buying the things from. I only use Campbell's recipe for the green bean casserole, but um, for things like pies, maybe other people's families aren't like this, but um, there, there are certain dishes that are like, oh yes, I need to know how to make my aunt's um marshmallow and uh sweet potato casserole yeah. and i i know that this person is going to bring this to our gathering so i want to make sure that i know how to make that when i move away from that family or i marry into another family and ha- start going to these other thanksgiving um places where particular recipes or just particular ways of cooking things um like you might brine your turkey or the certain things that you do um for me with, it's yeah the methodology <clears throat> it's pretzel jello oh yeah it's um, really good pretzel jello and specific way um, my mom made and now i make cheesy potatoes mm-hmm. Ooh, that's delightful it is interesting as you're talking about, you know, aunt so-and-so's something or other, like my body started to feel feelings of nostalgia, uh, family gatherings, childhood, whatever. And it's like, oh, this is what we're talking about. Like, I don't know about you all, but like I got tingly. I was like, mm-hmm. Charlie Brown, I did not Christmas Time is Here is playing in my... Interesting. Home. Yeah. I associate Thanksgiving with stress. Interesting. Well, it wasn't even just Thanksgiving that that was because it also was pulling together like Christmassy things and like mom making a certain kind of fudge cake that she always makes and has to bring. And so it's like it's a thing that's happening on Christmas morning (laughs) as we're doing Christmas morning. And then it has to come with us to the place. And yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just it's it's I think it's a bridge between multiple years, you know, that like here is this thing that is a staple, a, a seasonal staple Um, with sense memory attached to it that is consistent and stable even as the people change Mm -hmm. and food is one of those things that like is the most sensory recalling Mm -hmm. experience yeah (laughs) like it uses i think all your senses Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and so like having it as a grounding element of a ritual yeah um really calls back all the relationships and conversations that you have and the feelings that you have around it and Mm -hmm. the the stresses and the Joys and all that are all tied, interestingly, tied into food and what yeah. you're what you're eating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like taking on the Thanksgiving feast can kind of be a rite of passage. Uh, I'll I'll name uh, often, especially for women into adulthood of like I get to host yeah. Thanksgiving, which also brings along with it a ton of stresses. But like then you there there are so many ritual elements that come with it, like. What are the plates and silverware that we're going to use? What are the cloth napkins we're going to use? Are we going to get out the crystal stemware for this one meal where we are just lavishly in abundance? Mm. Um, Who gets to use the oven at this time? Do I have to make sure that these people bake all of these things before they come? Or can they put that in while we're eating everything else and then we pull the pies out later? There's so many different elements. So like when it's your turn to get to host that, it like feels like such a weighty uh, and important burden to carry, um, which is just so interesting that like a meal mm. would be that sort of a handoff that like i feel like christmas meals are also special but it's not the same like you you think of a christmas celebration a 
Christmas get. Like there's more pieces to the Christmas celebration than the meal, but Thanksgiving is all about the meal. Mm -hmm. Makes me think though about ordination and the Eucharist and these pieces about what does it mean to host this thing or to prepare this thing and what pieces are there to understand. And it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm. Being the host is being a minister yeah. Of Thanksgiving blessing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's funny, but I'm not being jokey. Yeah. Yeah. You look thoughtful, Maddie. No. Well, yeah. You know, my spouse and I pretty quickly in our marriage decided Thanksgiving was going to be the holiday that he and I forged our own traditions. And, you know, I, I get really frustrated generally when this is true but particularly in the holiday season because I feel like everybody demands so much of my time like you need to come here for this meal and you need to Mm -hmm. go to this this parents family this year and this parents family the other year and I just have frankly no interest in participating in any of that and not because I don't want to be necessarily even with family it's not because I don't like being with family it's Honestly, because I just don't like when people try to demand more of my time than I have to give. Um, and we decided pretty early on, like, we just weren't going to play the game of Thanksgiving in our marriage um, and make our own traditions. And what's been a little bit frustrating is, of course, everyone has found a way around that. Well, the week before, we'll do it. Or the week after, and like, you've missed the point. Um so my spouse and I have have made our own traditions, and it really r- rotates between Cracker Barrel Thanksgiving, which we are hosted by a restaurant, so I didn't take on any of the hosting, and I am not really allowing anyone to host us. Um, and that's been extremely meaningful. And then the times that we have done a meal, it's been a Friendsgiving potluck style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it's very much redeemed the holiday for me personally. It, hmm. I I look forward to it one way or the other. One whether it is a true friendsgiving, um, which sometimes involves family members, and that is just as beautiful. Right, yeah. um, potluck style thing in my space, <laughs> um, which I guess means hosting, but whatever. Or going to Cracker Barrel with just my spouse. Um, sometimes we've invited a friend and. I look forward to either of those things. So I I don't know. I, I do have like a, if I'm going to cook, I have to cook certain things a certain way. And there are mm-hmm. certain brands that have to exist. Um, and really, but really the only have to, I'm using air quotes for me, is I would like to be present to my spouse and I would like us to get to decide what it is. Mm-hmm. And if other people want to be there for that, cool. But you have to do it in the way that we've decided we're going to do it. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's also like, because Thanksgiving so often is like the, the traditions so often start as family traditions that like that step of creating your own family for you Mm -hmm. to have sort of that autonomy of, okay, now we get to step into traditions and um, decide how to make them our own. Uh, What are you going to do with that? How are you going to inhabit that space? And I I think, too, um, at least in my experience for Thanksgiving, like I when when people have family members that are all coming out of town for these kinds of holidays, I I understand the pull to get together more. Um, But usually all the Thanksgivings I have experienced, no one's coming in from out of state for them it's all the in-town family gathering and we can do that any weekend and Mm -hmm. you know at least in my spouse and I's experience of this holiday we get the one day off work not the next day not the day before the one day it is one day for us to get to re-center on one another and if I can see anyone every other weekend for, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And especially if you haven't made the effort the rest of the year, but you're expecting me to to use my one day off with my spouse to travel to another home. I don't know. I just, uh, see, this is why I said I had to be careful. Can I raise a question? Yeah. Is is it okay? Like, is this a pause moment in your story? Oh, I have no story. I was just talking. Well, because. To hear the sound of my As I'm thinking about it, I was thinking, I was reflecting on the way that feels for me and it's. It's, it's more similar than I might have guessed. Um, I 
as I was thinking about what feels important to me about larger family gatherings right now and the ones that I feel good about. And I'm like, I love you, my family, if you listen. <laughs> right? The same kind of careful thing you're saying. But it's like, I feel compelled to be there and it feels meaningful to be there if I can be supportive to someone who is hosting and needs the support to be able to make it through the event. Like, mm. mom's going to be hosting and I know it's important or, or helpful for me to be there to help think through and cook through and make the thing happen. And that's what's good about it. Not actually gathering. I, I, I'm not saying I don't love the people, but that's not the draw for me. In fact, if I was going to meet with these people, I'd rather not do it over a big event. I'd rather connect one on one sometime and chat. And prob- mm-hmm. this is the same thing with me with my birthday. Like, I don't want to do a birthday celebration. I want to like have friendships that go all the time. And and yeah. I'm wondering right now if this is connected to and what y'all think about. When I'm thinking about my childhood gatherings, I loved them, but also everyone there was people that I saw way more than just on that holiday. Like my, my uncles and my cousins were people that were part of my life all the time. Uh, and so it was just a big gathering of like a bunch of my favorite people coming together to celebrate and have this big meal. And so of course that was exciting. And now if I see them, it's like only this time of year. And so as much as I love them and I want to hug them and I want to whatever, there's, there's kind of like a superficially nature to it that feels just like all we really have time and space for is to give a little bit of an update and a, you know, yeah. a hug. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, as you're talking, I'm wondering if it is also different and maybe this will go, this will be what we kind of talk about in the after show, but it's different for those of us who specifically have found family versus like the blood family that you usually see at holidays. Like my found family Thanksgivings feel different than my blood family Thanksgivings because it's like a normalized I see you all the time and now I'm also getting to see you at this special way and this I don't does you want, do you understand what I'm saying I, I, mm-hmm. I, yeah I, re- I resonate with a p- piece of that at least which is the that I'm hearing is the the kind of spread outness or the diaspora of family mm-hmm. um, and then trying to cobble it together for these really important days every year we're like yeah we're all spread out over six states but let's try to like just touch base for one day Mm -hmm. versus I think the way that a lot of these rituals and these days are designed is for a community that you live with to gather together to celebrate ongoing life together around a rich day and it's one of many touch points exactly Mm -hmm. which makes sense about the growth and the whatever of friends giving because that's that's for a lot of folks these days in the, the what our ish generation uh, that's your day to day week to week community mm-hmm. yeah family. Well, if if we could be intentional like this over a meal all the time because of our proximity and you never really invite me until this one day that I it's the one day that I have off that I can do what I want with my spouse i I just feel less excited about it yeah. versus I have intentionality built into me and my partner's daily rhythms that I would like to continue on this day that we now all have off work and can do it together. Yeah. Um, that just personally for me feels better. And I, I get frustrated because I think um, people get really quickly offended by that. Or again, they feel like they're owed my time um, or it, there's a supposed to or a should yeah. attached to it, which makes me personally even more resistant to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I really think there needs to be space in these holiday traditions for people to grow out of the ones that families are a part of. And we can grieve that and, and mourn that. And also we need to let it be um, instead of trying to force what we think should happen during the holiday season onto other people let them forge their things. And if you're invited to be part of the thing that they're forging, decide if that's what you want to be part of. And if you don't, again, let's grieve what was and move on. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think you've named another really important part of uh, why there's a tension there because there is both a need to move on and a real profound grief, yeah. especially in uh, diaspora families. Yes. Um, where, 
it would it would it would be great if we all lived within enough time of each other to make a meal together. Alas, we are so far apart. And give me this one day. Um, yeah, absolutely. And that so, is a thing. and so I would. I maybe maybe we need to write uh, a, a liturgy to grieve um, the uh, the spread outness and the this the kind of sad. not quite impossibility the sad difficulty that it is to try to maintain that ritual or to let go of that ritual and like yes yes and um i think too there's there could be or i wish there was more of a recognition that anytime we have our own traditions and we invite others into them there is some level of comfort we're asking people to leave at the door yeah so like For me right now in the life that I currently have, I have a 10 month old. Um, If I were to go visit my family in Chicago for Thanksgiving, the joy of that would be, is he being with a grandparent and getting to be with my family in Chicago on Thanksgiving? The discomfort of that is it's not my daughter's own room. It's not a child proofed home. It's not my own space. I'm going to be so tired, but it's not going to be a relaxing situation. You know, so like, Mm -hmm. just can we recognize too I am asking you to give something up and can you choose this? And if it's a no, sad. And I understand. Yeah, it's just hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think um, all, of, all of this is resonating, I think, with my uh, grief for Thanksgiving um, these days because we, um, Jackson and I, were sort of back and forth close to or like living in close to pro- proximity to our families Mm. and um with my family the thanksgiving meal did kind of just feel like an echo of our sunday meals with the one group of family that we that lived in town with us or the the one of my mom's siblings who lived in town with us and those sunday meals were honestly one of my favorite moments of the week because it sort of was this moment of we're just going to rest in each other's company we might play a game we will laugh way too hard and then we will all go well it's time to start the work of the week and we'll all disperse but thanksgiving is like you get an entire day to sit in all of that Mm. um but we um move away and um you for whatever reason you're letting go of the old traditions, whether it be you don't live in that proximity anymore and it's Mm. not feasible or you have children and the traditions can't look the same Mm. or um, you're starting your own new family and you want to start your own new traditions. um, That grief of that loss also doesn't mean that like there can't be, touch points in the new traditions um, back to what was beautiful about those old traditions or like I was even talking to my mom on the phone today and we won't do Thanksgiving with them this year but she said well if you guys ever do Thanksgiving with us again and I was like what are you talking about of course we will it it won't look the same as it used to but like there someday in the future will be a Thanksgiving when we're with them again um who knows if it'll be here or there or there's, yeah, there's so many things up in the air, but um, it's sort of, again, these, these touch points to those things that carry through Mm -hmm. whatever your Thanksgiving tradition looks like, Um, which I think I've heard us name um, Jackson named comfort. Um, We've named, um, Um, not a connection um, to the the people who mm-hmm. are in your life and taking a moment to dwell richly in their company um, and to celebrate abundance and nature's fecundity as we head into this season of darkness um, and cold if you live in the cold places. Um, so if we're thinking about all of those things that carry through these traditions, what are some things that mm, we might offer to our audience as Mm -hmm. ways to hold those things in their own traditions as we craft something? Yeah. I'm thinking about, 
I think a lot of families have some variation on something you're grateful for being shared, that kind of thing. And I, I, my brain is way rabbit trailed from where I thought we would go today to, to this discussion around your community and such and thinking about the difference in meaningfulness of, I, I, and again, I love my, my family that I live kind of far from. And, and yet if I were, if I was with my immediate family, then yeah, I I would be able to do this, I think quite well, but it's a different situation to think about what am I grateful about this year? And then knowing those that have witnessed my life and, and I'm trying to imagine for folks that I only get to see once a year, trying to make any meaningful statement around my gratitude. And it's like, I got to tell a big story first to kind of explain who I am and <laughs> what this thing means. And where's the difference of in certain community? Yes. My immediate family, but also like my, my yeah, found family friends to be able to name in a word and have them know what mm-hmm. that word has meant for me this year. Yeah. Um, to hold one another and, and be part of the Thanksgiving. I think one of the big things that I'm grateful for is my friends, my people, my family, my, that life witnessing thing that is super, mm-hmm. super important to yeah. me. Um, mm. Yeah. It feels like Thanksgiving is a beautiful moment for another extension of life witnessing and gratitude um, to say, look at what gifts have been given this year. And I want to acknowledge this and hold that out for all of you to see and witness as well. Mm-hmm. I like that. I'm sitting here thinking about um, the question, wh- what is abundance for you? Mm. Um, particularly as in recognition that not everybody has an abundance of much. Um, an abundance of food in this economy might be particularly difficult for some folks um, an abundance of space to host mm-hmm. <laughs> an event like Thanksgiving, but just wondering what what is abundance for your particular mm. circumstance, and is there a space and capacity to celebrate that particular abundance, even if it's not what is ordinarily celebrated on a Thanksgiving? Mm. I'm trying to think through if there has ever been a time that I didn't have people not from my immediate family in Thanksgiving with me. Oh my gosh, me too, actually. And I don't know that that is true, Yeah. Um, which is something that I love about the Thanksgiving holiday, that more so than Christmas, which sometimes, I think I think we often still had people from our friend group over for Christmas uh, in my family traditions, but I think more so than Christmas, which can tend to have some pretty family-centric rituals and observances in it. For me, Thanksgiving has always been um, an abundance of hospitality to tie into some of what you just said, Maddie, of like, there's always someone that you bring into your home as well, or you go to someone else's home as well. Mm-hmm. Um, this kind of like connection points, um, uh, that's, that's probably what I would highlight as like one of the things that, that I look to have mm. in Thanksgiving, um, is this, is this, uh, yeah, connection point between people. Yeah, that that makes me think. Um, I I think I've uh, similarly to Jackson. Um, my my parents were college professors, so they always open their home to whatever student couldn't go home for Thanksgiving. Um, so we always had a few stragglers of people who were potentially really missing their family in this very family centric holiday. Um, but again, it it gave them the chance to spend Thanksgiving with these people who they got to see all the time um, and who um, could do the sort of gratitude and knowing and seeing that Phil was talking about earlier. Um, but I think um, something that you could do to practice that sort of Um, hospitality that Jackson's talking about is find out what traditions Mm -hmm. those guests are Mm -hmm. um, away from Um, because even though so so many pieces of the food are the same maybe they're not or maybe they always do this thing at their gathering Mm -hmm. does your gathering have space to invite them to do that 
in your gathering too. Like mm-hmm. maybe there's a song that they always sing um, or listen to. My family always listens to Alice's Restaurant, um, <laughs> which is a very long song. And it's always like in that kind of sleepy time after the meal. Um, it is a long song. It, it's yes, it's 20 minutes. It's a story <laughs> song. Um, but um, one of the really beautiful gifts that Jackson's family gave to me um, my first Thanksgiving away from my family um, was um, I think uh, Jackson's mom invited me to make one dish to bring um, from from my family. And um, there were a couple of people in Jackson's family who knew the song Alice's Restaurant. were like, oh. Sure, that makes sense. Let's, let's let's listen to it. And so they made space for me to still participate in this one tradition that I was missing. So how how do we continue to expand our own traditions by welcoming in these other traditions that might be uh, different? I love the yeah, concept of whether it's a friendsgiving or even even if it's family, but particularly if there's some folks from different family backgrounds to bring a dish from their past. Well, maybe maybe they weren't a family to Thanksgiving or whatever, but bring an important, like a, a dish with a story or with memories attached to it. Mm-hmm. And that we get to eat those together and, and tell the stories. Yeah. And like, if we really want to be dorky, everyone has to bring like the recipe with like a synopsis of the story mm, yeah. on the back. And then we, we hand that all out and you get to take the, the stories and the foods with you from that place. Um, that'd be really cool. That'd be delightful. Mm-hmm. We are coming down to the end of our time for this particular podcast, which is already long enough to tie me your apple pie to. So, um, so it's gonna... time to put on the game. <laughs> uh, well, oh yeah, football. Well, the other folks get in there and wash oh, the dishes. A... Interesting. Oh, None boy. of us mentioned that. I that's didn't say true. lady folk. Anyways, now well, you did. Oh shoot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're coming down to the end of this conversation, but the conversation is going to continue probably very much in the vein that we've already kind of kicked off. Um, if you want some more, um, Deconstruction, anti-colonialist, anti-capitalist Thanksgiving talk. Absolutely. All that sort of stuff. <laughs> you can find it over on patreon.com slash wayfolkarts, um, where we will post the after show shenanigans for this particular episode next week, which I believe times out to be the week Thanksgiving or? that you would be prepping for Thanksgiving. So That's exciting. Yeah. Well, then you can, you know, Jackson, can yeah. you... Become a patron at any time. At any time. Wow. Yeah. For how many monies do I need to listen to this fantastic deconstruction episode? That's a great question. The Five lowest dollars. Tier, there it is. <laughs> I'll Five it dollars? My... Five dollars. Do you know how much? No dollars. Do you know how many five dollars is it takes to buy a turkey? More than five. It depends when you buy it. That's true. I'll true. Take it to you. For the <laughs> cost <laughs> of either what? a turkey a leg. Turkey leg. <laughs> Two cans of cranberries. Yeah, probably. For less than the cost it's going to cost you. Oh boy, we're in the weeds. Yep. Um, <laughs> you can join Patreon and get access right away at the lowest tier of patronship to the after show, to patron only posts. There's a lot of other tiers, a lot of other fun things associated with Patreon. Yeah. Um, you can find everything over there at patreon.com slash wayfolkarts. Yeah. All right. Well, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and may your football team win. They can't yeah. all. Win. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> do we do the Midwest goodbye? Because it's oh. Thanksgiving. Oh, like, bye. My grandpa would do like the slap his thighs and be like, well, well yep. I suppose. Yeah. but then, I would simply yeah. sleep until mom told me I could leave. <laughs> bye. <laughs> so I guess we should get going probably. Uh, car's warming up. I suppose it's about that time. About that time. Well, bye.